Today, I'm gonna to show you how to install and set up one of the best fully customizable Discord bots. There's absolutely no coding required. All you need to do is follow along with the steps I'll show you and you'll have a bot that can do basically anything you could think of. Okay, let's jump into it. The reason we're choosing this bot is because it's the biggest open source community bot that basically nobody has heard of. It's been around since 2016 and it's only gotten better with time. The bot has an insanely active community of coders which create plugins for the bot. The red team calls these plugins COGS. On screen now is a list of COGS which have been fully approved as safe to use by the red team. Feel free to pause the video as I'm scrolling through this list because when I said the bot can do basically anything you could think of, I wasn't joking. Once you've got this bot set up, it's very easy to install new plugins and try them out. Okay, let's get to the installation. I'm gonna show you how to install red on Debian and Raspberry and Buster. The reason being is because the installation guide is exactly the same whether you're installing the bot on a Raspberry Pi or a Debian virtual machine. If you'd like to see a guide for setting up Debian virtual machine, navigate to the video on screen now. If not, let's continue with the Raspberry Pi installation. The reason I suggest using a Raspberry Pi is because they're powerful enough to run a Discord bot and efficient enough to keep running all the time. Once your Pi is set up, you'll need to head over to the website and download the imaging software for the SD card. If you didn't know, the Pi uses a tiny micro SD for storage. I'm gonna do this next part on my Mac because it's got a built-in SD card reader. Okay, so this program is super simple to use. Firstly, we need to choose our OS. We're gonna be going with the Raspberry Pi Lite OS as we don't need the full desktop experience. Making sure your SD card is plugged in, choose that next. And then you can start the imaging process. This is going to write the Raspberry Pi operating system to your SD card so you don't have to go through the tedious process of installing the operating system. Next, we need to grant ourselves SSH access to the Pi, and we can do this by putting a blank file with the name SSH on the SD card. That way we don't need to plug a monitor or anything into it. Once the imaging is done, your SD card should look something like this. Now all we need to do is open up a terminal window, change directory to the SD card, and create a blank file with no extensions called SSH. We can do this by doing the following command on screen now. And if we go back to our finder window, we can now see that SSH file is in there. I'll quickly just show you how to do this on Windows as well. Just go to File Explorer and make sure File Name Extensions is ticked. Right click, create a new text file, rename it to SSH, and just delete the extension and hit enter. And yes again to save the changes. Now that we've prepared everything, we can access our Pi over the network. All we need to do is connect to the host name Raspberry Pi. We don't even need to know the IP address. Then, you can log in with the default username and password of Pi and Raspberry. All of the following commands will be in the description for you to copy and paste. First up, we've got some general package updates. This should take about a minute or so. When the command is finished running, you'll be returned to a prompt, so just be patient. Step 2. Next up, we need to install some prerequisites. This should take about 3 minutes or so. By the way guys, the whole installation was recorded in one session with no cuts. I've sped up the waiting so you can see every stage for yourself. Step 3. Download and update Pi env. This should take about a minute. Step 4. Add Pi env to the load path. Once you're done with the installation of Pi env, you'll get this error. Simply copy the text by highlighting it and pressing the return key. Then navigate to the .bashrc file in your home directory. Once you're inside the file, paste the text you copied before at the top. Press Ctrl X to exit. Save your changes by pressing Y and then hit enter to confirm and you should be back outside. If you want to check that your changes have saved, simply run the cat command on bash rc. Once that's returned, you can scroll up a bit and you should see the text that you pasted in earlier. That means you're all good. Once you've done this, you can do a reboot by running sudo and reboot. Once your machine's back up again, right click in the top left of putty and do restart session. And then you can just log in again. Step 5. Install Python. This command takes quite a while, so just be patient with it. For me, it took around 25 minutes. You might want to go make a cup of coffee for this one.
Step 6. Set pi e and v version. This command's instant, so don't go anywhere. Step 7. Create virtual environment. This helps to contain the Discord bot within Python and keep everything tidy. Step 8. Activate virtual environment. This command is important because every time you start a new shell connection to your device, you'll need to run this command again before you can start the bot. In short, if you don't see red env in brackets, you can't run any of the commands for the bot. Step 9. Install bot prerequisites. This should take about a minute. Again, it's very important that you're in the red environment that we activated in the previous command from this point onwards. Step 10. Install the Discord bot. This one's going to take a little while again, so if your coffee went dry, you might want to get another one, because this is going to take about half an hour. Step 11. Setting up the bot. Once you run the setup command, you'll be asked for a few details. Firstly, the name of your instance. This name will be used in the command to start the bot, so keep it simple. I'm going to use tutorial. Next, we need to select a path where all the bot's data is stored. It's tried to suggest a reasonable one for me, but I'm going to make it a little more simple. I'm going to put it in slash home, pi, red discord bot, data, and tutorial. Confirm your changes by hitting Y and enter. Next we need to select the back end. Just keep it simple and go for JSON. So 1 and enter. You've now completed the basic configuration. You could technically start the bot, but before we get carried away we need to create an app on the Discord developer portal. Link in the description. Once you're there click new application, give it a nice name, give it a fancy picture as well, save changes. Go to the bot tab on the left, add bot, yes do it. And then all you need to do is copy the token. Step 12, starting the bot. Now we can actually start it. Run the command and then enter the token that you copied before by clicking right click. Now enter your prefix. I'm going to keep it simple and use exclamation mark. Once you've done that, the bot's going to load for a brief moment until you come to the next screen. And when you're here, this is very important because this is the invite link to your bot. So you're going to want to copy this. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to paste it in our browser. And then you should get the bot invite page. Now I'm going to add it to my server here that I've got for a test. Authorize. I don't think I'm a robot. And that's it, we're done. Now if we head over to our Discord server, we can see we've got a new arrival and it's our bot. If you run the help command, you'll probably see that there's not much in there at the moment. So here's what you're going to need to do. If you run the cogs command, you'll see that all of our plugins are unloaded at the moment. So what we're going to do is just copy the output, run exclamation mark load and just paste. And you'll see that the bot's loading in chat. If we open up our command prompt window, we'll see that the bot's been downloading some stuff, but it will eventually load your plugins. Next, what we need to do is give the bot some permissions. So head on over to roles, create a new one. And I suggest using the administrator permission for this one as, you know, we trust the bot, we've set it up ourselves. Now this next command is complete preference, but I think it looks really cool. Help set, use menus. Now if you run the help command, you get a little menu which you can flick through using the emojis. From this point on, you can customize your bot however you like. I would suggest playing around with all the commands and seeing what you can do. If you'd like to know how to install all the free third-party plugins which I mentioned at the start of the video, I'll have it linked in the end screen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.